Hey everyone, coming up, we're going to talk about restaurants, uh, specifically ones at Disney World. If you like them, we'll give you some suggestions to what you should try whenever you're over at Universal Orlando. Yeah, it sounds like a fun one. Live from the Bob Varley studio, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 81 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation to Universal. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of the show. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I am joined by Jenny Lynn Knopp. Hello. And back on the controls, associate producer, Rhino Clavin. Hello. Awesome. Couldn't that take was, that sip fast enough, could you, buddy? That was a great hello. <laughs> that was a great hello. Today is also sponsored by Gatorade, clearly. I'm joking. They, they gave us no money. I can't even endorse their product for being good. Um, okay, so I'm going to get this out of the way. First off... Uh, I know everyone loves our crazy antics that we usually put on for uh, mm-hmm. over an hour at some point, pretty much every week. We always try to keep it under an hour, and then all of a sudden, it's it just explodes to over an hour. That cannot happen this week. Uh, unfortunately, we have other stuff that we have to do in terms of our job um, right now, today. Uh, so so basically, is- there's going to be no singing, and Rhino will not be telling us any stories of his trials of the second grade. I uh, well, I'm not making any promises. <laughs> there, uh, there will definitely be a little bit of singing. Um, the, it has to happen right before I was. There's we always started, singing on I this was, show. Uh, I'm starting with a nice rendition of uh, um, the. Oh, who sings that song? I don't know. You're the not Dee saying Dee words. Brothers? No, I was singing that. Give me time uh, to uh-huh. realize my crime. I think that's Boy George. Yes, that's that. <laughs> there thank we go. you. Culture club. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, this is this is going to be on the shorter side, probably closer to around 40 minutes. So don't get disappointed when we let you down because it's a shorter show. Uh, it, it's just how it is. Sorry about that. But hopefully we have a lot of That's good information packed in this that it makes it all worthwhile. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to open it up to housekeeping. Who is going to kick it off? Well, I, have I know we all have housekeeping. It's too late. I already changed the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> Universal Japan is closing their Back to the Future ride. So sad. I'm really depressed. Rumored, I believe. N- oh. They have not officially announced that it is closing. Oh, well, it's rumored to be closing. And then there was a date that went along with it this morning that I read, too. So There was a rumored yeah. date, too? Wow. Yeah, it's, well, that's kind uh, of a specific rumor. I believe May 31st. Yeah, it said May 31st. I'm sorry. Of this year. Rhino's losing sleep over this. No, it, it's really disappointing. That's um, it. That's the last one. Yeah, the, it is the last iteration of Back to the Future of the Ride. It was going to be one of our selling points to try to get Pete to allow us to go to Japan. <laughs> we got to come up with something new now. I Yeah, that's... I mean, I guess if everyone wants to take the time to write to Pete and tell him that he should send us to Universal Studios Japan... To picket Japan the closing of it? ...before it closes, uh, that's Pete at WDWinfo.com. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> tell him, send the Universal team to Japan so they can see Back to the Future of the Ride before it closes. And I'm sure we will not have a job after the end of this <laughs> week, but hey, it'll sure be fun. It was um, a nice ride. Yeah. And of course, Universal uh, Studios Japan hasn't confirmed it yet so that's why we say still rumored but still Roma. you know it, it makes sense it, it's closed everywhere else why not close it there too i don't know if the japanese have an affinity for back to the future i assume they do since it's been open so long or maybe they just don't take the time to really argue about it these are Who sad knows? times we need to find a universal studios japan podcast and then a translator who can <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it would be in Japan, <laughs> Japanese, I do not know Japanese, Japanese. But okay, thank you for that housekeeping, Rhino, JL. Yeah. yeah, I got one too. So Impact Wrestling is returning to Universal Studios April 21st through the 24th. So all wrestling fans out there are now rejoicing. Um, 
they're going to be back in the sound stage at the back lot where they were when they were here regularly and mm-hmm. they will be uh t- taping stuff oh stuff <laughs> yes on those days as um as it was before the event is complimentary admission so you don't have to pay for it but if you want you can and you can get the VIP experience that's $89 and that includes credentials premium seating commemorative event poster a nightly meet and greet photo and autograph session with a select impact wrestling star or knockout and then you also have exclusive access to the press conference and weigh in for the slam anniversary event match that's scheduled for the June pay-per-view sounds <laughs> never mind slam anniversary <laughs> Hush back there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Rhino has nothing to say. <laughs> Sexually. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so this is happening April 21st through April 24th each uh, night at 7 p.m. The doors open at 6. Mm. Well, I, I know I'm not going to go. Be knocking that door down, Craig. No, I, I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I have no passion to go do that. So, I may or may not be there. I've gone before many times. I used to take my uh, used to take my son on his birthday every. Okay. Uh, it's if you've it's ever a been there. It's a regional dialect. It's a regional dialect. It's one that, although I've escaped a lot of the issues with it, I don't walk around calling people yins and. I yes. every now and then I'll slightly go into the downtown and stuff like that, Dancing. but never, never horrible. However, a lot of the grammatical errors I have picked up on because that's how pretty much everyone speaks up there. Not there are civilized, classy people who come out of Pittsburgh. You're just like not one Michael of them. Keaton. Um, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Michael uh, Keaton. Fred Rogers. There's a lot of good people who come out of Pittsburgh. Tina Fey. Uh, However, what's that? I think Tina Fey was from Pittsburgh. I do not believe that. She's from from somewhere in Pennsylvania. I uh, I don't believe she's from Pittsburgh. Oh. She might. Did she go to school at Carnegie Mellon? Well, she tells the story about her father's accent. About he downtown like, or no, there was a teacher she had. I don't know. I'll look that up later. Hmm. I don't know. I have no idea. But anyways, yes, part of that is sometimes, even though whenever is supposed to be used for one specific purpose and one event instead of one which could be used for like a whole you know describing any past event it's we swatch them out so basically when i want to say you know when i was younger i will say whenever i was younger and i understand it makes me sound foolish however that's how people talk from where i'm from uh you know we don't go running around making fun of new jerseyites because they say woulda all the time it's just you have to accept the good with the bad, and one of those is my bad. So, <laughs> see what you did there. All the love, Craig. All the love. It happens. Um, now into the actual universal part of it. For we we talked about it before on the show a couple weeks ago, uh, and it is officially open now. The Hello Kitty store in Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, whenever I first went in, covered it all around, and got an idea of it. Uh, they still weren't completely open. Now they are. And with that has come one of the most terrifying things, in my opinion. <laughs> and that is a actual character that you can meet of Hello Kitty. Oh. Um, it just looks like something on Supernatural, like Dean and Sam are going to have to come save that little girl. I hate it. I agree with Rhino. That's like the stuff nightmares are made of. Like It's, it's lifeless. I believe that's actually what I titled the first whenever i shared it the oh, article it? that it was officially open i oh, said really? the hello kitty character is what nightmares are made of <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go it's a recurring theme um it's absolutely terrifying so i we're leaving for california in two days i guess i should say that uh there won't be a universal show next week <laughs> oh yeah uh, that's probably good <laughs> housekeeping pay attention Sorry. of it if you're watching Very this right actually now. next week's episode is the is the one dedicated to our resolutions so watch out for that one, guys. <laughs> My bad. My bad on that. We won't have an episode next week. Um, so hopefully before we leave for California, I'll be able to get over to the Hello Kitty store and get some video of this character. Because and some merch. It is. Oh, you know, I've got to fit into that woman's Jaws Hello Kitty t-shirt. 
It's just right up my alley. Okay. <laughs> That's sarcasm. It's not. <laughs> so, uh, if you're going to Universal, you can experience the Hello Kitty store now officially open and encourage Ready your for nightmares. Business. Yeah. Yeah. Open for business. Ready for your souls. Ding ding. Is that you opening the store? Yes. Okay. Was... Or starting the wrestling match. Oh. I, I We're opening up the stock market. <laughs> It all works. It all works. No. So, any other housekeeping that we missed out on? I don't think so. I think we got it covered. Let's do this. I, it's not really housekeeping. It's just this computer's brand new because mine was destroyed this weekend. And uh, I don't have my preferences changed, so it keeps shutting off. Oh, fun. So, hopefully it all works out at the end. It'll, it'll all be fine. So, let's get into this. Um, like this, try that. It was a... It was a segment that hasn't popped up on this show now for, well, you guys have never been a part of a like this, try that one. This no, that's was, why I was confused about the two. I apologize. This was uh, Rude. this was in the first series. It was something that Sean and I threw together where uh, that one was based solely on attractions. So uh, we took some of the most popular Disney attractions uh, and said, well, based on if you like this ride, here's our suggestion for what you should definitely hit while you're at Universal. Um, you know, I I feel like our fan base has kind of evolved into a lot more of the people who are watching and listening are Universal fans. So something like this isn't really for you guys as much. This is more on the... Well, for those people, they could do it reverse. When we suggest what the adverse Universal side of, of it is, then they can translate that over into Disney if they ever go to Disney. I didn't even think about it that way. See, it's very practical. We're it very is. practical here on the Universal team. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. So this this will be very helpful for those of you who are Disney World fans who want more advice on uh, Universal because we don't have it. Uh, but apparently it will also work out if it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. If you don't know anything about Disney World and you uh, want to learn more. Uh, mm -hmm. Nope, there we go. Rhino chimed in with his advice. Usually what he says whenever he wasn't paying attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Waiting for nope, it. It's still happening. It's still happening. Well, I heard that part. So... I think I figured this out. Man, thank goodness gracious right now. Without further adieu. 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 Let's get into this. Sorry, this is going to be really weird. At least with the attractions, there was a form of structure around it. You know, but this is like, this is all very broad, wide open. It's almost, it's going to come off like we're just all over the place with this. But I'm pretty sure that we regularly come off as being all over the place with almost <laughs> everything. So they they're probably okay out there. I hope they're okay. And if they're not okay, I'm curious if that has anything to do with the topic or not. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. Okie dokie. Yeah. Yes. What have you got for us, yeah. Craig? So I want to start off with something that is near and dear to my heart. Pizza. I love pizza. You love pizza? I do love pizza. No, I'm a fan. You love pizza? Um, what, what, in your opinions, would you say is the best pizza on Disney property? I, I think there's only one answer. The Italian will... place. Via Napoli. Yeah. Via Napoli or Napoli. It all depends on what type of Italian you are. Italian. I don't know. Italian. I'm not Italian at all, so. No, I'm not. I'm not Italian either. I... I've. Never mind. <laughs> You've I'm known not... Italians yes. from time to time. Oh, dear. Yes. You've. I've been very close to a very Italian. Yes. You, you're very aware of the boot. <laughs> Le boot. Le that's boot. not even. Yes, I believe that's a mixture of French and Italian. Um, I, I believe that's a mixture of French and idiot. <laughs> so go ahead. Fantastic. I think we all know that Via Napoli, Via Napoli, at uh, Epcot's World Showcase is the go-to place if you want pizza on property. Uh, now, a, a big deal of it is if you've never had. Uh, just regular pizza, let's say Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Domino's, you know, chain pizza, not 
artisan made pizza in florida you will notice immediately that it tastes a lot more awful than it does other places uh, around the country and that's because uh, florida water is Terrible. basically <laughs> sewer garbage diarrhea water it's, <laughs> it's really not an exaggeration it's bad yeah it's it's diarrhea water in case you it all do like not it. have experience with it yeah sometimes when you turn on the faucets you know and this is the filtered clean water it comes out smelling like rotten eggs it's yeah. it's that reclaimed florida the smell of florida <laughs> it's reclaimed water which is rotten it's eggs, not yeah. all just orange grove scents here yeah again diarrhea water <laughs> Phil, is, make, it, is it diarrhea, Phil? Let's make that a hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag diarrhea water. Yeah. Um, yeah, however, s- place, enjoy this restaurant <laughs> review than every, diarrhea every water. Every now and then, you can get, uh, you can find people who work around it, uh, typically with, you know, water that isn't from here. Uh, oh, yeah. You have to have a filter of some sort if you live here. The, even a filter still doesn't fix it all the time. So, like, I know, I know locals, a lot of locals are crazy about flippers. I don't like theirs because I yeah, just, it's, eh. it's kind of, I still don't, it, it does a good job of getting rid of the taste, but it's not completely gone. Um, Via Napoli doesn't use water from here. For And what he's referring to, they don't use water from here in making the pizza dough. Yes, the dough. That's, that's, that's where the water ties in with the pizza. There actually was a connection. Yes. Thank you. I guess I should have mentioned that. Yeah, you're just talking about Florida water and then pizza, and I'm, yeah. you know, just Entire. in case. We're the talking water... about the water and how it, how it is used in the process of making pizza dough. Via Napoli imports it. Yes, and um, uh, I Italy. That's why I think it's from Italy, actually. Beat the crap out of me. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's actually. You know who I, from it, Italy? It, yeah, that's the the chains that do that are the best ones. NYPD Pizza gets their water from New York to make the yeah. pizza, and it honestly makes. A world of difference. So let's say, though, they're not going off property and they can't have NYPD pizza. You got to go to this other place. Where is that? It's in City Walk. That's where I'm assuming you're going with this. Me, yes, I me, am. Me. Okay. Yeah. Vivo. No. That is Darn not it. Incorrect. <laughs> Was that a serious guess? Yeah. Well, Vivo's the Italian Vivo. restaurant. Are you talking yeah. about... He's, he's, he's talking about pizza. I'm talking about Red Oven Pizza Bakery. That's, well, that was my second guess. Now, I would have put that as the first guess if we're talking <laughs> pizza. But that's just... You don't, say, um, you don't say the pizza restaurant was the answer to your pizza question. Is, mm. Well, we're talking about Via Napoli. Sorry. Well, I that tried. Just, boy, that's the next part. Oh. Okay. Scratch? Just. Wicka, wicka, wicka. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Drop a beat, Rhino. That's all I can do. Okay. Um, so yeah, no, we have to recommend Red Oven Pizza Bakery in uh, City Walk. Which I've actually never been to. you've never been to it? Nope. Cheese Oh, Louise. it's really good. It yeah. Smells amazing. Every time you walk by, you can see mm-hmm. them putting the pizzas right in the oven. I've it is. I've had a margarita pizza there. It is. It is. You're I've, right. It is Via Napoli type good. Yeah. I, uh, I, I have this argument with a lot of people based on best theme park food, uh, best theme park pizza. A lot of people still choose uh, Via Napoli, where I do. I love the pizza at Via Napoli. However, it is far, far, far more expensive than what uh, the price is at Red Oven Pizza Bakery. Um, the other cool thing yeah. about Brick Red, whatever it is. Red Oven Brick yep, Pizza. that one. Um, you can order a whole pizza and get it in a box and go. Can't, it's not very easy to do that at Via Napoli. Yeah. So no, you can take it back to your hotel room if you wanted. Yeah, they will deliver to your hotel room. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, they have they have bikes that they will deliver on property. Is there a delivery charge? Probably. I would no. think. At least maybe I'm still wrong on the information. That was something they were doing whenever they first <laughs> opened up. I don't want to. I've never done it before. Um, we're doing no. it next time. I have legs. I can walk to go get my pizza. I have done this before, not with having it delivered, but where I order a whole pizza and I put it in a box and then I go home with it because it is really good that it's worth the effort to go to City Walk yeah. to get it and bring it home. Oh, I do that all the time. Whenever Kylie and I want pizza, that's actually where we go. We just get two um, using her lovely universal discount. It makes it very, very affordable. Mm-hmm. But the prices still aren't bad. All their pizzas range between, uh, I want to say, 11 and $15. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I would say it's the equivalent of a medium pizza. Mm-hmm. So that's 
that's not a bad price considering and again if you're comparing it to via napoli very affordable yes very affordable um i feel like you know the big pizza they have at via napoli i feel like you could do um you could do two of these pizzas and it's right around the same price and right around the same size but um you know they also have good salads other stuff there don't want to heart just stay on it too long try red oven if you are a pizza person uh sticking in the italian family uh I think we can all admit that one of the best Italian restaurants at Disney World is right next door. Tutto Italia. Tutto Italia. Rhino. Also very pricey. I've never been there either. Sorry. Do you eat? Do, I, you, do you have I a... I do eat. I, I know you hate Italian food. I come from a upbringing. Well, no, you hate <laughs> Italian food, so that what? really yeah. doesn't help any of this. Yeah. This initial stuff. No, I don't hate Italian food. I was going to say, who hates Pizza? Italian food? Everybody Lasagna is like spaghetti. one of my favorite foods. He hates biscotti. But I hate... Spaghetti. I ate it so much. Biscotti. So cool. Bus- that, biscotti. I'm, I don't think I've ever met anybody that hates biscotti before. No, don't even get me started. All right. Not getting you started. On a side note, my favorite thing ever is, um, it, this has ob- nothing to do with anything, but I have to put it out on because I was crying laughing about it the other night. Um, if you haven't watched the movie, What We Do in the Shadows. Oh my God, so funny. You need funny. to go out and watch it. Um, it's It was made by... Um, He's making the Jermaine new Thor Clement, movie. Uh, of Flight of the Concords. There is a nice scene in there about spaghetti, which they call biscotti, and it's just really funny. And I will, I will put a clip of it in the show notes just for that point. So, But still go out and watch the movie if you have the chance. Really funny. Gives my thumb up. Okay. Italian food. Tutto Italia. That would be probably the premier in-park uh, Italian restaurant. Um, you know, it's Tony's Town Square. No, we can't even. Don't even. <laughs> it's right up now. Uh, actually, I would go in terms of Disney World uh, Italian. Il Molino is very, very close. Sometimes better than Tudo Italia. I think it's really a back and forth on quality. And uh, Il Molino what, being in the in the Swan, right? The swan. Resort. Or is it the Dolphin? It's I think the swan. it's the Swan. Yeah. So those are like the go-to Italian places at um, at Walt Disney World. There is another them, one on the boardwalk now. Oh, I forgot about uh, Al Forno. Trattoria. I can't ever say Trattoria. That. I'm not Italian. Al Forno. Trattoria. I just know because Pete yells at me every time I call it uh, the way you've said it. Trattoria. Trattoria. That makes sense for me to say it that way. I'll work on it, guys. Um, our absolute recommendation, if you are a big Italian foodie, we've done a review on it before. We did it right, uh, right at the end of the year. Oh, uh, me, me, me. Vivo. Hey, hey, hey. Rhino, I know is. you've eaten there. I have eaten there, and you know what I had to eat there? Spaghetti. Bis- biscotti. <laughs> it was actually, it was not red sauce spaghetti, and it came with like chicken. It was actually really good. Yeah, I, as we talked about in that review, we, we can't call Vivo authentic Italian. It's not. Um, that That's just the case. However, it it is still good Italian food. It has a mm-hmm. nice twist on it. Very, very modern and contemporary dishes. Um, I, I know that like Pete was super excited about the one, the one entree that was on there because he had barely ever sees it at Italian restaurants and he had it all the time whenever he was last in Italy. And so he was just happy that it popped up on the menu, even though it didn't capture the same feel. And I, I think I could say that about a lot of the dishes, uh, they aren't as close as you could get to it, but still, really delicious price. The price is on point. Another affordable opportunity at Universal, and absolutely, uh, you know, and that, that's a tough one. It's obviously not the only Italian place we could recommend. I'd also have to throw in the mix, um, Mamadella's over at the Portofino. Mm. I might be rocking the boat here, but I actually prefer Vivo. I do too. Oh, okay. No, I there's that doesn't say anything <clears throat> wrong about Mamadella's. I just Vivo to me is it feels fresher. It doesn't feel like heavy Italian food, although you can make it a very heavy meal um, if you want to. It just I, I always walk away there light, satisfied, and not like freaking out about the bill. Whereas I can't say that. Um, I can't say that about Mamadella's. 
but it's still really good. It's just every time I walk out of there, I feel like I'm being rolled out on a cart because I just ingested 16 pounds of mozzarella <laughs> after also putting away three pounds of pasta. It's really difficult. But And emptying two pounds of your wallet. How many pounds my wallet? <clears throat> two, two pounds? Two pounds. Wow. Why was I carrying around British currency? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cue the Benny Hill theme this song. <laughs> No, no high fives? No? Okay. No. It's fine. No. So that covers pizza in Italian. Let's move on into... Should have done it in Italian. <laughs> oh, my. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's move on into another, um, another style of food uh, that I think we would be remiss without talking about. I don't think that's the right way to use that word. Uh, let's go into British fare. Okay. So... What would you recommend at Disney World in terms of if you're looking for good British food or a good attempt at making British food? The Rose and Crown in the UK Pavilion of World Showcase. Mm. I agree. Well, I mean, there's not really that much options. Well, so. I mean, there's the fish. Yeah. <laughs> there's I don't the think fish you can disagree. On the, Yorkshire. Oh, right, next, right, right next door to it, but it's a little bit limited. Yeah. No, I agree. But, uh, you know... We all love good pub food. I think us in particular. Uh, so not those minced pies. Here's here's the difficult part. Uh, we, I think there are two shining examples of good English pub fare at Universal. Let's just get it out of the way. It's either Leaky Cauldron or Three Broomsticks. Mm -hmm. As we've mentioned, Three Broomsticks is a more Americanized version, uh, where Leaky Cauldron tries to be a little bit more faithful to. Uh, English food. Which one would you recommend? If you like Rose and Crown in Yorkshire Fish Shop, which would you send them to? You only get one option. Well. Leaky Cauldron. I, that's what I was going to say. I think I have to lean towards Leaky Cauldron. They got the Scotch egg. Yeah. They got the Scotch egg. They got the Scotch egg. But also, they and have the like the fisherman's pie, bangers and mash. Like, it's yeah. the closest closest thing but it's actually like good no i i absolutely agree if you're looking but that's not to take away from three broomsticks i actually really like three broomsticks no it's really good and but actually I, think... I would take it this way if you are a fan of rose and crown i would hit leaky cauldron that's what i would yeah if you are a fan of just the fish and chips i would actually put um Broomsticks? I put broomsticks. For some reason, I always have better fish and chips there than I do at Leaky Cauldron. Plus, um, broomsticks has the um, uh, shepherd's pie, which I uh, very much associate as being like a, you know, a dish that you would get at the Rosen Crown. I don't know. There's me. I like shepherd's it's fascinating. pie. I love shepherd's pie. I love shepherd's pie. Hmm. I have a feeling that mm, noise you Wonderful. just made is going to end up in the next is unplugged remix video. Mm. <laughs> so, a, a staple of theme parks burgers. Is, <sighs> sorry, I stole your you, thunder. You stole it right before I could get there. <laughs> right from between your buns. Hamburgers. So much for a tight show, but okay. <laughs> Hamburgers. Tweet. <laughs> <Toy>, uh. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, there's it it's hard to walk around Walt Disney World and Universal for that matter without getting slapped in the face by a burger at some point in time. Um here's where it gets interesting though. Uh, in talking about this doing thinking about what to include in this list everyone knows about burgers at Disney World, but I can't think of any place that actually stands out and has like a fantastic burger at Universal or at Walt Disney World. Universal well, is a complete different case. Yeah. Okay, um, I have a burger that I like at Walt Disney World, but I can't say that it's like really stand out like, oh my gosh. It's just uh, a burger that I prefer in comparison to the other choices, which isn't saying much. But I really like the plaza. Hmm. And I enjoy the Plaza's burgers. Again, not because they're the best burgers ever, but they're just pretty good in comparison with what else is available. I do, uh, although I'm not a huge fan of the restaurant in general, fan of the theming, the food is hit or miss. Um, Sci-Fi Dine-In 
mm-hmm. whatever they fit, uh, switch up is their featured hamburger. It's always usually creative. Like mm-hmm. at the, the one point in time they did the, uh, like the all American burger, which was a cheeseburger with a hot dog on top of it too. Just yeah, really working that. to shorten your life. Um, I, I think that is an acceptable, if you're really in the mood for something like that, uh, of course, at every quick service restaurant, almost all the way around, if they serve just burgers, fries, and chicken tenders, you can get a pretty crappy one can at I any of those. Can I tell you what but... the worst burger on Disney property is? Go. The Royal Guard burger at uh, Studios. Yeah. It's that Darth Vader yeah. one on the pumpernickel bun. It's yeah. gross. Yeah. The end. I've had better. Um, I, I think Deluxe is going to change that coming to mm. Disney Springs really soon. It's going to be nice gourmet burgers. Mm. Uh, something that is very, very, very welcomed at Disney. But uh, you're looking for a burger. Where are you going to go? You, I think there's two options, essentially. At, at Disney or Universal? At Universal. Universal. Yeah. There. Cowfish and uh, NBC Spultz, Bob, whatever it's Brill, called. Brilling Grew. Brilling Grew. Mm-hmm. Brilling Grew. Brilling um, Grew. Both of those are outstanding options. Um, uh, literally in this entire list, we could kind of take, uh, we could find a way to like put those restaurants as solutions to any dining issues. So here's, yeah, so here's my, here's what I think about that. I actually prefer the NBC Sports Grill and Brew. Uh, brew and grill, whatever you guys are saying. And uh, I like the food there. I, I just, I like that place better. However, mm. in terms of burgers, you have to admit that Cowfish probably has a more creative selection. I don't agree with that. I don't you think. Do I think they have a creative burger that's like the peanut butter one. That's but not even the creative one. Okay. The, which one's the creative one? There's quite a few of them. But I also think that NBC Sports Bar and whatever the whatever its name is called, I think that that also has very creative burgers. I don't know, and an extensive list of burgers, creative in a different sense, I guess. I don't know. I don't often eat burgers at sit down restaurants. I'll only get them at like you know Five Guys somewhere that's like a good cheap burger. And um, I have had a burger at NBC more than once. I don't know that I've actually had a burger at Cowfish, though, so I can't really weigh in too hard on that. See, I have a staple at Cowfish. It's the um, their, like, jalapeno burger that has jalapenos in it. It's, like, jalapeno cream cheese. I think jalapenos actually molded into the patty, too. I like a spicy burger. Rhino and I, we both like our spice. We do. And you didn't like your burger 100% when we went to... NBC Sports Grill and Brew. I don't think yours was made. No, there was. I had the lamb burger, and there was there was problems with it. The bun was um, too charred. The bun was burnt. Yeah, and um, I don't even think. But then my sister and I went right after, and she got a burger, and it was everything was done right. It was on par. It redeemed itself. I I think they. Yeah, I, I think they have redeemed themselves in my book a little bit. I would put the cowfish over Grill and Brew, uh, in terms of. The burger. burger. Okay. But that's that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Doesn't but have to be all my opinion. It's nice that there's two good quality places yeah. right near each other. And no. we can't think of a single one for Disney. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it's, I, I honestly don't even know where I would go. Deluxe will change that. Yeah. But, but it's not there yet. Okay. Jesus. We are like literally rapidly running out of time okay. with this. Okay. Let's choose one more food group. I know this is this give, is going to have to be part give me a one dessert. of it too. Ooh, yeah. Let's do something sweet. A good dessert place. Should we go ice cream only? Yeah. Or yeah, because Disney's got a good. Well, they got several, so that's a good one. Let's do an ice yeah. cream place. Okay, ice cream. We'll, we'll finish f- this meal off. At Disney, the first one that comes to mind is the ice cream parlor on Main Street. I yeah, I have to agree with that. Although there might be better choices out there it's that's the most iconic Mm -hmm. well you can it's because it's it's like that you have that i mean ice cream places smell but you know what i mean it's walking down main street with that overwhelming like cookie smell that Mm -hmm. just resonates from there waffle cone and they've got a variety there they even have dairy free ice cream there for people with special diets it's a it's a pretty decent ice cream place but i have a problem that they use what they use Edie's ice cream yeah Mm -hmm. it's cheap in my opinion it's not my favorite ice cream it's not I don't love it. Did you have another place that you had in mind? Beaches and cream. 
Oh, mm. okay. Because I like the uh, the Florida Sunshine, the fraps they do there. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah, no. Is that yes. what they call, do they call yeah. them fraps there or are they called milkshakes there? I thought they called them fraps. I don't uh, know. At Beaches and Cream? Yeah. Milkshakes. They bring all the boys to the yard. I heard that song again yes. this morning. <laughs> it plays every It's better morning. than yours. Guys, I know the song now. There's probably going to be a lip sync video coming soon. Fantastic. <laughs> Did you say hand <laughs> Hand-tastic. Um, so, I, yeah, we'd have to, if you enjoy Beaches or Cream, Beaches, beaches and, and cream. cream or the ice cream parlor. <laughs> beaches. Uh, I think we will all be in unanimously agree on what the winner is at Universal currently and probably even after Tucson opens up. What is the best place to get dessert on Universal property? It's Rhino's turn. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Florian well, Fortescue's. Well, that's what I was thinking, but I didn't know if you wanted me to give a non Harry Potter related answer. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, no, it's There's, amazing then. Yeah. Here is the thing about It's the Universal. best ice cream I've ever had in my life. <laughs> a lot of the best things about Universal have to deal with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Yeah. But it's it, there's a really good reason for that. It's because Quick, what's your what, favorite ice cream? Oh, um Quick, fast. Uh, uh, Salted grain car- lavender. Salted oh, caramel oh, blondie. Yeah, no, it's also tough because I like the uh, I like, I like the, the apple chocolate. one too. Though. Oh, oh God, I do not so, like that one. So different. No, 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 different. no, no, no. Love it. But but the best part is is there's like I can't even get to the other flavors because I like the flavors I like so much that I'm afraid to try and do one of the new <laughs> ones. Like not afraid, but I just you don't want it because you. And want butterbeer ice cream is great too. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, you're the saying soft serve so good. Get... Yes. I, Everything Craig says is apparently can what's do a, lo- out of my a lot of experimenting with ice cream there. Yeah, get no, a little I, crazy. I love Florian yeah. Fortescue's. It's uh, it's my favorite place to get ice cream almost anywhere, it, it, and a lot of it is because of the flavor. And that's on top of all that, you still have in Universal Studios Florida alone. You still have two Ben and Jerry's locations that are that <laughs> also serve right a Harry there. Potter themed ice cream, right? Or is that only the, but it's Ben and Jerry who make the ice cream that's served in the restaurant, Harry Potter restaurants. I don't. It, they do the peanut butter and the strawberry one. Do they? Yeah, it's an exclusive pla- flavor for the three broomsticks. But now they'd make it at the other one too, I think. But I don't think they're the ones who make the ice cream in the Flourish and uh, Florida Skews, whatever. Florian Fortescue. Florian Fortescue. It's a word in the book that I never read. I just go over it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's one of those skippy words. Like a skip. Um, <laughs> fantastic. You confuse me every time you speak. No, no, it's the opposite. I, I am right me. about the Ben I and Jerry exactly thing. I know exactly what he's saying, <laughs> yeah. and these are things that are true to my life. He's just the person that actually says it out loud, and it and it tickles yeah. me. Sometimes. Like I, I'm recognized the word. I see it. I've seen it before. And I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I love how he has a term for it, too, a skippy word. Yeah. I I have skippy words. Good. Good. I speak perfect English all the time. (laughs) Whenever you want. That's just, that's my curse. Uh, Ice (laughs) cream. That's my curse. Florian Fortescue's. Spider-Man of words over there. You gotta do it. You you just gotta. If you're not going to Florian, what's what's up with your life? You're Florian me. If you're not going to that Florian. That was not funny. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that was a, that, that yeah. bombed. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we're all over, we're already over the time that we were allotted to do this. So, I we are going to have to pick this up in another future a episode. Part two. A part deuce. We're just going to drop a huge deuce, everyone. Yeah, we're going to drop a big part deuce on all of Even you Even though later. technically this you was the deuce. speaking for all of us. Well, this was the, this is deuce. In you terms need, of the you series. need a deuce deuce. So we'll do part we'll do part deuce of the deuce. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God. I cut it the worst time. This yeah. show always goes to the bad place. Always. <laughs> so we hope you guys enjoyed our really random look at all this stuff. Uh and uh appreciate you taking the time to watch and listen and we promise we will have more information uh but uh feeling upset that we don't have a show next week well go back to our archives and watch one of our older shows you can find that at disunplug.com whole big list full of them uh here there and everywhere and of course uh you can find 
the rest of our current episodes this year on youtube.com slash disunplugged and all the really old ones are at youtube.com slash wdw info so save yourself time some time just go to disunplugged and they're all right there i thought you were going to go dr seuss on us with no. you can watch them in a box and with a fox you are and- awful you well, are just I, you know, bad. I, I thought it was coming. And you are bad. You, you disappointed. You are bad. You're bad. You're a bad, bad man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course, leave us feedback. Uh, comment on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, if you're not subscribed to us on all that stuff, do it too. Mm-hmm. All social media, YouTube, iTunes. Just do it. Jay and I yesterday, we were reading through comments, getting a kick out of it on iTunes. Some good stuff out I didn't there. Know you can leave comments on some iTunes. Good stuff out there. I think someone even updated and wrote the only time that we sound excited and enthused is whenever we're complaining about the people who leave us <laughs> comments. <laughs> which I absolutely love that one. It's definitely got me in the ribs there. Got a tickle in the ribs. Tickle, That's tickle. a saying. Tickle, That's a saying. tickle. Uh, so yeah, do all that stuff. Uh, we love you and appreciate you, but we'll be back next week for our show on, uh, resolutions. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be back with you next week. Uh, until then, um, I'm going to push this button. Yeah, do that. I think that would cue the music. I don't want you to say deuces are universal. So think of something real fast. Okay. Well, uh, restaurants are universal. There we go.